Corporate social responsibility has taken on a new dimension that companies have um, engaged in areas as part of their engagement with uh, society, with their stakeholders, addressing issues in their supply chain, or be it only in terms of giving back to society, contributing to worthy social causes, that companies have taken on a role which is very similar to what we traditionally have seen uh, governments doing. I mean, this, ha this has been very pronounced with uh, companies moving their supply chains more and more into areas of poor or low governance or where rules may exist but are not sufficiently enforced and where then Western companies mostly, not exclusively these days, have been pressured by their stakeholders to address all these issues which currently in most Western countries are addressed by uh, governments. But we also see it in um, liberal democracies in developed countries too, for instance in the area of privatized public, public services, where companies who um, deal with education, with healthcare as a business, face demands and um, expectations from society which are very similar to what governments would be expected to do. And this has given a new dimension to what companies do if you look at disaster relief where we see corporations heavily involved or if we think of issues of diversity in the workplace, be it gender diversity or racial diversity or ethnic diversity, where companies um, actively draw up policies and become engaged in uh, dealing with these issues. Well, citizenship is the um, um, concept uh, which political scientists and indeed politics, the sphere of politics has used to answer two questions. First of all, if we look at members of a certain community, what are the rights and responsibilities of the members in that community as it were on a horizontal level? And then of course it also gives us an answer about how this community should be governed. So vertically, who should have the authority to govern, what are the responsibilities of governments and other actors who have an authoritative role in this community and how should that look. Now if we say corporations enter the political sphere, it appears to be very handy to use that already existing accepted and practiced way of thinking about social and political relationships and apply that notion to corporations as they are now involved in that arena. Well, the, the citizenship perspective, I think, um, offers some very nice uh, understandings of these relationships. First of all, we can say, okay, if corporations are like governments, for instance, doing welfare state provision, becoming involved in political processes. We talked uh, yesterday about the examples of the mining tax and the carbon tax, where business, in fact, is very heavily lobbying and influencing the political process. That's a critical example, but we can also talk about a positive example like what corporations in the mining sector do to Aboriginal communities in this country, how they have been very well ahead of the curve in many questions of dealing with these non-territorial Aboriginal claims to land and heritage. We see that co corporations then, if we bring citizenship to the party, fit in a frame where we can say, okay, how should they um, understand their responsibilities, what are the concomitant rights also, so this is not necessarily an anti-business or a restricting agenda, it's in some ways very much empowering once they are becoming members of that community. And most of all it gives us some ideas of how they could successfully govern their relationships, so if they do stakeholder dialogue, this is not just a pragmatic um, way of dealing with new constituencies but it actually and that came out in the discussion yesterday very well in the talk they uh, deal 
with norms of democracy, inclusion, of autonomy, of being governed but having a say to how to be governed of citizens. And in that sense I think there is a very rich uh, potential in applying that lens to cooperation. Well, I think ultimately these uh, notions of corporate citizenship of course raise the questions why do corporations become involved in that arena? Of course corporations, um, as the way we have set them up in most parts of the world, as limited liability, publicly owned, um, investor governed entities, um, are, have a profit uh, maximization goal and scrutinize things, activities according to the business case. The question though why they are suddenly confronted with these demands has little to do with the direct business case. It is more about the license to operate. It is a fundamental condition for them to be successful. And in that sense, uh, this thinking in terms of citizenship and seeing them as political actors takes a little bit the immediate pressure of looking for business cases in each and every CSR measure out of the management. It is more understanding that these things need to be done and that corporations have to live up to new expectations because they are in a different role. Of course, once you assume that role and, for instance, engage with Aboriginal communities in terms of employment, inclusion, self-governance of these communities, you want to do it in a way that, as a company, this fits within your broader uh, goals, one of which is attaining reasonable profits. So, in that sense, corporations do not necessarily fit 100% in that citizenship role because governments do things because they are right and even if it costs a lot of money to look after asylum seekers or to run a healthcare system, it is done because it is a civic entitlement of citizens. Um, corporations face a sort of different uh, set of constraints here and in that sense we can also ask if corporations are the natural actors in that area, but for the time being where these shifts between government, business, civil society have occurred in the last uh, two, three decades, we see that as a working concept, this citizenship thinking can help companies to manage these new demands more successfully.